Welcome to our broadcast. We are thrilled that we have the opportunity to come into your life today. And I hope today that God speaks to you, is everything that you need for Him as our time together. Enjoy. Today I want to I want to share with you some thoughts as we continue in paying it forward. And today I want to take up the subject of aim. Um, we are what we watch. We are what we think about. We are what has our attention. And I think many times a child of God misses that. Okay, Tr truly, truly misses that. Um, that it's, it is God's called us to have an aim. And I believe, as the the sermon title t tells it, I believe you're, you're either fool if your aim is right, or there's less in your life. I don't believe there's a happy medium there. Uh, I believe it's one way or the other. So if you're able, would you stand with us in honor of God's Word? We'll read this and we'll pray and you can be seated. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. As I urged you when I went to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus so that you may instruct certain people not to teach false doctrine, or to pay attention to myths and endless genealogies. These promote empty speculations rather than God's plan, which operates by faith. Mm, listen to this. Now the goal of our instruction is love. That's our goal. Our goal today, our, our reason for existing in Christ is for Christ to do something in our life so that we love. And this love comes from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Let's pray together. We thank you, Lord. Simply, I'll ask for my words to be yours and my thoughts to be yours. I ask you, Lord, today that we would realize that everything we are really begins with our aim. And I pray that you speak to us and we'd walk in obedience to what we hear. And God would be careful to give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen, Amen. Let me be seated. Thank you. Some have inquired about this. Just a few weeks ago, we had our year ending, year beginning conference um, where we set the budget for the, the coming year. Um, and also we, we, we set officers, we elected officers and leaders for the, for the coming uh, time frame. Uh, one of the things that, while we were talking that came up was the subject of communion. Uh, I'm all about communion. It's the number one way uh, we show who we are in Christ. Uh, and, and people inquired, why don't we do communion more? And, and I will tell you, while we were thinking about it, I said there was a surprise coming. When I think about paying it forward, there's not a better way for us to see paying it forward than when Christ paid it forward for you and me. Long before I accepted Christ, long before I even knew anything about it, Christ had already paid the price. Uh, with that in mind, next Sunday, hopefully the weather will be better. People will be coming back in from some vacationing. But, but uh, next week we'll be observing communion in our morning services, both 8, 30, and 11. With that in mind, also understand that one of the reasons that we don't observe it as much as some people have been accustomed to in church is because I think there's not anything more sacred in Christianity than communion and the sacraments thereof. I grew up with a pastor that would preach from Corinthians about somebody eats and drinks unworthily, they eat and drink damnation to themselves, and for those reasons some among you are asleep. I mean, some of that kind of stuff I heard. And some would say, man, that's actually in the Word of God. It's in the Word of God about communion. So I think it's something we should take very seriously, and we do. So be, be aware of that. When I think about paying it forward, I think about sowing seeds. I think about building bridges. You might not even see the yield of it today, but it will happen. This just happened to me just a couple of days ago. Uh, there was an opportunity for me to pay it forward, for me to minister to somebody. It wasn't much. It was just a few dollars. It wasn't even five dollars. Just a little bit. And I uh, didn't really think anything about it. Later on, I got a text from somebody in our church and said when this young lady got back to work, all she was talking about is how I'd done this, that. And I didn't even know they worked together. Didn't even know where they worked. And, and this thought crossed my mind. Sometimes you see it immediately. Sometimes they smile, sometimes they receive it, sometimes you feel like you're on a mountain because you paid it forward and somebody received it. Other times they're not going to receive it. What good have you done if you pay it forward to somebody and they reciprocate it? Sometimes we pay it forward and it's not reciprocated, but yet we've, we've sown a seed, we've built a bridge so that God can use it later on in somebody's life. It's not all a warm, fuzzy feeling and be reciprocated right on the spot. But you and I, are in the, in the, we're in this thing to sow seeds and build bridges and bring glory and honor to the Lord. Several years ago, it was a building campaign where we pastored and came up with this thought, is that sometimes people need to dare to dream. No matter where you are, no matter your age, no matter what you've done right, wrong, or indifferent for God, I hope today that God would begin to show you that He's got more for you. 
No matter what you're doing in your aim of life, I want you to realize that God has more for you that you would dare to dream. Maybe you would vow to be a visionary. And we coined that saying 20 years ago, that some of us here would realize that we need to be visionary about the things of God, that God's got things for us out there that we've never seen before. It's, sight is not vision. If you're looking at something, that's not vision at all. Vision is when you don't see it, but yet God reveals it to you and it's out there and it hasn't taken place yet. But the thing I want to mention today is that we also need to have the mind of a missionary. I wonder today how many people actually got up this morning and thought, why am I here today? Why am I going to church today? I just did a revival the last few, just a few weeks ago, and one of the things that just captured that church where I was was this thought that I've shared with you many times. And it was just something little that I said. I said, did you know it's impossible for God to fill a cup if you don't turn it right side up? If you have no expectation today of God, and you know the old time, there's kids in here that have never seen this before. You remember when you used to go to the restaurant and it was all set, the place was set when you sat down? Do you remember how on the side, if you were a coffee drinker in Bo's, a big time coffee drinker, Bo, uh, Glenn is, and they drink my share for me? But uh, you remember when you went and they had the coffee cup and it was turned down on the saucer? And the little saucer, I don't even know what you call it besides the saucer, but the, the saucer had another little indention in the middle of it where if you turned the cup over, it would hold the cup. Y'all remember what I'm talking about? Give me one of these if you got it. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that means you're really young, okay? But you remember, if you never turn that coffee cup over, then the waitress or the waiter or the, somebody that was there, they never even asked you if you wanted any coffee. But if you turned it over, that meant you, were, you wanted some coffee. I wonder how many people today, their aim of their life is so messed up that they don't even turn their cup up. I wonder how many people today, they just came to church and it's going to be another day. You just remember it being a rainy Sunday. And yet I want to raise up an army of people that realize that we'll only get from God when our aim lines up with Him. And sometimes we can miss it because our aim is all messed up. Somebody said it best that said it this way, if you shoot at nothing, you'll hit it every time. Let me say that for the rest of you that are slow. If you shoot at nothing, you'll hit it every time. When I think about paying it forward and serving, I think it's seeing what Jesus sees, and I also think it's aiming at what Jesus aims at. Let me give you some scriptures, and if you're a note writer, you've got to take these fast. They're not going to be up there long. Galatians 5.13 says, yes, my, Yet you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, rather serve one another humbly in love. Matthew 23, 11 says, the greatest among you will be your servant. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10 says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Mark 10, 35 says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. Think about that now. You're not called to pastor. You're not called to preach. You're not called to teach. You don't have the ability to sing. Many of us, we play games that I'm really a, a second-rate Christian. I, I'm not like Brother Jay. I'm not like somebody else. But listen to me, regardless of your giftedness in Christ, and we all have it, regardless of your giftedness in Christ, in the body of Christ, the reason God has done what He's done for us is to serve other people. Let me read it again. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. People today wonder, why do I exist? If you've asked that question lately, maybe the job's not working out. Maybe you're ready to retire. Maybe somebody's here ready to expire. I don't know. And you wonder why you have breath today? Let me give you a great answer that's right out of God's Word again and again. We are here to serve another person and impact them for the cause and the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Why did He leave us here after we were saved? It's to serve others. And when we serve others, our aim is what God needs it to be, and we will impact other people right, in the right way. Let me give you one more. Galatians 6.10 says, So then, as you have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto everyone. Listen to this. Especially unto the household of faith. I committed that mem to memory a long time ago, Galatians 6.10. As I have therefore opportunity every day of my life, God expects me to do good unto men. Unto men, generally. Saved, lost, good, bad, ugly, good looking. You know, terrible personalities or great personalities, regardless of what side of the track they live on, do good unto all men. 
In other words, when you and I hit the, hit, we, you, we hit the bricks tomorrow, when we're living a life tomorrow, when we're off at work and we're at the home, God expects us to do good unto all men. Hmm. He said, if, if, if they've done evil, God's going to take care of that. I'll repay. I'll take care of all that. But you do good unto all men. And then I love the rest of that verse. It says, especially under the household of faith. Very few times in the New Testament, even the New Testament, is their emphasis brought to the local church. This is one of them. Especially under the household of faith. You come in God's house, you ought to be looking to do good unto other, others. Hmm. Some of y'all looking at me like a bull in a new gate. It's right out of God's Word. There are people today say, so what's, what's wrong with people's life? I really believe their aim's messed up. I really it is. I, I think it is. Here, when I think of aimless or aimful, listen to this. I've come up with a, an acrostic, an acronym, if you will, for aim. Here it is. It's accurately impacting mankind. What, what our aim is today as a born-again believer, what our aim is today in being a churchgoer, and our aim today if we call ourselves Christ-like, we call ourselves Christians, we're redeemed, we're changed that our aim today should be accurately impacting mankind. What a, what a great way to think about it. Accurately impacting mankind. And I want to give you three things that come to mind about that. And here's the first one. When I think about aiming, accurately impacting mankind, the first thing, it involves interior before exterior. You know, man is fascinated and consumed with the exterior. You know what I'm talking about? I've always said this, the guy walks by the mirror and he slows down to take him a good look. Huh? You let somebody walk by and we just, we're focused on them. But you know what? Listen, they might be the most gorgeous thing you've ever looked at, but let me tell you what I found out a long time ago. Some of that stuff's skin deep, but ugliness is to the bone. You hear me? Isn't it amazing that that exterior and they look like they got it all together, and all of a sudden they open their mouth and they're the most vile person you've ever met? And we put all the emphasis on the exterior, and yet God's Word tells us that God doesn't look on the exterior of a person to start off with. He looks on the interior. And see, if we're going to be, if we're going to have the aim that brings glory and honor to God, that aim is not going to start with the exterior. It's not going to start with a bracelet. It's going to start with a heart that leads to reminding me about this bracelet that will lead to the exterior things of my life. So you can't change the interior by the exterior. But you can always change the exterior by the interior. Oh, listen, it always influences it. Lately, I've been rereading a book, and it's a heavy read. But it's Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. My book is so old, it's yellow pages, okay? Literally, that's how old it is. But in part of that book, he talks about it's not outside in, it's inside out. Just little words. But I want to remind you that if we're going to have the aim that brings glory and honor to God, if you're going to see what Jesus sees when you see other people and when you see life, it's got to start with the interior. That's the reason we have an altar. That's the reason that nobody will know simply why somebody came to the altar unless they share that with somebody. What you're doing is you're bringing your interior to the Lord and it will affect your exterior of your life. That's the reason we don't have a, a dress code, if you will. You know, my dress code for, for Lakeshore Church is cover it up, okay? Is that a good one? Huh? That's the reason that, listen, somebody wears blue jeans, I'm not going to get wigged out on that. And sometimes I get so hot in a coat and tie, I wish that we did have them on. But listen to me very carefully, because I will not be guilty of selling an exterior product to God and not beginning in the interior of a man. When God gets the interior, He will get the exterior. But if you, you, you and I spend all our time on the exterior, there'll be people that bypass the interior because they think they've done it on the outside. No, no, no. It's inside out, not outside in. Got to go. Here's the deal. Second thing I think about with accurately impacting mankind is this. You must have interest and intensity. These two can go together. But think about this. We got to be interested. You know, we got to have a, we got to have a heartfelt interest on mankind if we're going to affect mankind. I believe this. If I believe anything I ever tell you from this pulpit, I think there's so many people that are jaded today. We, we've heard it. We've heard, we've, my pastor used to say we have lip service but no life service to go with it. And we've been very jaded. Some of you on the sound of my voice have probably been jaded because of pastors. Oh, they talk it, but do they really walk it? And you wonder. I've always said the greatest compliment of my life will not come from you. It won't come from staff. It won't come from fellow people in the ministry. It's going to come from my family that see me 24-7. But listen to me, there's got to be an interest and there's got to be intensity that goes with it. Fame person said, Lord, give me England. He had a heart for God to change the continent or the country of England. 
The prayer of Jabez says in that prayer, and you might have read the book that was written about it, but the prayer of Jabez says in that prayer, oh God, that you would increase my territory. That I'm not satisfied where I am, but I want more. I want you to do more for me, Lord, than you've ever done. I want you to use me. But we have to have a mindset that goes with a motor. <laughs> you got to have a mindset that goes with a motor. Many times we think if we do it, that will be enough. But let me tell you something. It's sort of like cheerful giving. God sees our heart. James is not absent. James took this up in the first chapter that he wrote in his epistle. James says, faith without works is dead. See, we talk all about our relationship with the Lord, and yet it's not manifested in what we're doing. If we don't see, the people don't see our aim, and they don't see the product, then what good is our faith? What good is it for me to talk about faith if I don't have works that go with that faith? So there must be intensity with that as well. And last but certainly not least, when I think about aim, aim is always intentional. Listen, it's unique. i show you something. You'll see a visual in just a moment that talks about how, in, how intentional aim is. I looked up the word intentional and found some words like this. It's deliberate. It's planned. It's premeditated. That's what intentional means. We talk about paying it forward. Let me tell you something. If you think you're going to pay it forward accidentally, it's never going to happen. If, you're going to, if you think it's just going to be coincidental that, that a situation falls in your lap, no. I'll tell you what it is. When you get intentional and you say, now God, I want to pay it forward. I want to be used every day. God will give you opportunity to do that. He'll do it. You'll see things you've never seen before. All of a sudden, you're beginning to have the mind of Christ. You're beginning to see what Jesus sees. And then what ends, ends with that is you begin to act like Jesus would act. And it changes lives. It really does. Let me tell you this. It's going to be a, a crazy, way to, crazy way to end. But I want to show you a couple of things. I got a couple of people here that are going to love these two things. So what in the world has it got now? If we have anybody here that just doesn't care for deer hunting, you're probably not going to like these illustrations. And I don't walk down so they can't see. Let me show you what this is. I, I got this off of some in-laws and outlaws a couple of years ago. I had, a, I had a nephew that needed a little money. So I bought, this is actually a bow sight that I've never put on my boat. It's pretty swanky too. It's, it's a high dollar thing, but I didn't pay high dollar for it. But I, I've had it sitting up. One of these days I'll put it on a bow. And, and, and this is a scope. This scope here is about as big as the gun I had it on. But this one's broke, so if you steal it, it ain't going to work. I just want you to know that. Some of you are already coveting it. But you know, I'll show you some crazy stuff. Now, now Chris has it up there for me. This is, this is the reason that the sermon came to be what it is. See, I think every one of us in Jesus Christ are to have aim. You, you, you're supposed to have things that interest you. It's, it's supposed to be a godly thing. What do you see? When you see other people in your everyday life, what do you see? What's your aim? And I believe today when you aim at the wrong thing, it's going to end up being empty. I've known people that have worked a long time to have a lot, and, and at the end of it, what was it? You've heard me say it before. It's a good stewardship reminder. Did you know research says that over 90-something percent of the kids that, that, uh, that inherit something from their mom and dad blow it? So I'll tell you, some of you just keep working. Just keep on keeping on. You want me to tell you why they blow it? Because they, they didn't work for it. See, see, when our aim is what it needs to be, then we won't be aimless, we'll be aim full. We'll have a full life. You say, what? you lost me somewhere. Watch, watch, watch what I know. And, and we got one here. Uh, Gunner's here. Coached him in ball. There's other guys that know. I've seen some of them the last few days. For, for many, many years, coached folks in baseball. Gunner, tell you this. He didn't know. He's already heard his name twice up here. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough, Coach Jay. But here's the deal. Gunner, tell you, pitching and, and batting. I just saw this on MLB just two days ago. I said, I wish I had it recorded. I'd show them what he's talking about. They were talking about a major league baseball player that's having a hard time hitting right now. And he likes to take a step, and when he's, he goes to swing, they showed it on MLB. They slowed it down, and the, his head moved like four times before the ball got there. And they were saying, this way he said, it's impossible to hit a baseball if your head's moving. Gunner would tell you, I told him this at tryouts, and then we go out in the outfield. I said, listen, guys, when you're running down a fly ball, you got to keep your head still. Because if your head's moving, the ball's moving. Hmm? Do you all understand that? In other words, your eyes are moving, then when you look at the baseball, 
If your head's not still, then the baseball's going to be moving, and that's how you get hit in the teeth. It's all about, listen, it's all about aim. Hmm? I believe this. We are what we aim at. Hmm? I don't want to hurt anybody today. But you wonder why there are 10 chairs in this church that don't have backsides in them today? It's because we spend a lot of time aiming at stuff that doesn't amount to anything. Hmm. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching truth now. They'll tell you, Gunner and others tell you, this is what I do. I get on the mound with them when we're practicing, and I'll say, how many of you bow hunt? they raise their hand. How many of you gun hunt? I'll tell my baseball players this. And if you're, if, if you're a Bambiite, you know, if you don't like hunting, I'm sorry. But let me show you something, guys. I said, I wish I had the gun. I told Bo, I almost brought a rifle. I thought that'd be a little much with the scope on it. But here's the deal. You ever seen a deer hunter shoot at a deer like this? Hmm? Some of y'all didn't get this. Watch this now. You ever seen a deer hunter shoot at a deer like this? How about if I pull my bow back? That's stupid. Somebody said, that's asinine. By the, word, by the way, that's not a cuss word. But let me tell you something. I wonder, I don't want to hurt anybody. Let, let's put Jay at the top of the list. I wonder what our aim looks like when God sees us. I wonder if in my walk with God sometimes, <laughs> maybe worse, and we wonder why we're not full. We could be aiming. We could be running after. We could be trying to get something that God says doesn't amount to anything. And we want fullness in our life. We better aim at the things that God Almighty aims at. Hmm. It's good stuff. You know, I think about it this way. When I think about aim, you know, what, what's it all about? I think that right there is less than what God wants for me. I'll challenge anybody here about the aim that I'm going to talk about for the next two minutes. The greatest feeling in the world today is to know that my name is written down in the Lance Book of Life. <laughs> Mallory don't want me to talk about flying anymore. But the reason we're fixing to go down a runway and Mallory looks like she has seen a ghost. Oh, I don't like this daddy. I said, man, I love it. That's the greatest thrill in the world going down through here hundreds of miles an hour. Take off. And I looked over at Mallory and said, Mallory, if we die, we're going to go to heaven at the same time. She said, shut up, Daddy. Why do you talk like that? You know the reason that stuff like that doesn't bother me? Listen, when my aim is what it needs to be. You let me start running after all this stuff that Jay wants to run after? I don't have that same confidence in the Lord. Huh? Hello? Y'all with me? You want a full life? You want a full life? Let me tell you how you get it. Start aiming at the stuff that Jesus aims at. Huh? You walk out of here today. In the next few minutes, you walk out of here and go, you know, Lord, he's right. You used my preacher today. He's right. I want to aim at the things you aim at. I want to have get up and go for the things you have get up and go about. I want to impact people the way you impact them. I want to see you do in my life what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Hey, there'll be a fullness. Hmm. It won't be lack. It won't be less. It'd be fullness. Hmm? See, this is what it comes down to. And I, I asked Chris to put it up this way. And I just want to read it. You got it, Chris? Less or full. I believe this is everything about me. Less or full. We decide by our aim. I believe it. I believe it. Everything about me. You want a full life? It comes down to what you're aiming for. Hmm? I think an aim that doesn't bring glory and honor to God is a, lack of, is a life of lack, in my opinion. You'll wonder why in the middle of the night you don't feel fulfilled. You wonder why you go and you work and you have those things and you don't feel, you don't feel satisfied. It's probably hang out in this area. You might be aiming for the things that don't amount to nothing when it's all said and done. You've heard me say it a hundred times at least. When it's all said and done, all that's going to matter is what was said and done with Jesus Christ. That's all that's going to matter. All that's going to matter. And you know what? If I have that aim today, there's a fulfillment that nothing else can do. Here's what I'm going to leave you with. The greatest feeling in the world is know that you're right with the Lord. Greatest feeling in the world. You want me to tell you the second one? 
and I'll, I'll take anybody's challenge on this one. The second greatest feeling in the world is when you do something for somebody and you didn't have to do it. There is something just holy <laughs> about loving somebody and aiming at them the way Jesus does and you didn't have to. That's it. Now, I won't, I, won't, I won't debate that with salvation, but I'll debate it on any other level. Today, if you're downtrodden, weary, you feel like you've been dealt a terrible hand of life, today maybe you have everything. Right now you lack, you want for nothing. You lack nothing. You can go do whatever you want to do, but yet there's still something gnawing at your insides. I beg you today, give this some thought. Because fulfillment of life, I believe with everything about me, fulfillment of life comes from the aim that you have. I believe it. I, 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 when I was building this weeks ago, thinking about this sermon, I thought, this one doesn't really work. This doesn't work. People already know what I'm going to preach. But then it just stayed with me. Hmm? You want me to have a great day? You want me to tell you how my great day is? Have the aim that Jesus has. See people the way Jesus sees them. Feel like at the end of the day that I was his speech, I was his hands, I was his heart, I was his life, I was his feet. Hmm. Aim. But then we get busy. You know, what's this? Here's what the scripture says. What does it profit a man? I'm going to change it just a little bit. I think I have that liberty. I think it's still accurate. What does it profit a man if he aims at the whole world? and loses his soul. Huh? What does it profit a man if he aims at the whole world? Got to have it. Gets up in the morning to have one more, one more, one more. And at the end of it you go, it's not fulfilling. What will a man give in exchange for it? Aimless, I believe this. We're less or we're full according to the aim that we have. That's our decision. It's our decision. It makes us who we are. All right? If you're able, will you stand with us today? I want to pray over us today. I want you to think about this. You know, one of the things that's been on my heart is I want to have the correct name. I never want God, when I stand in front of him that day, to God to, to point out a certain day and say, on that day, Brother Jay, your aim was not right. Maybe it was flesh instead of spirit. Maybe I missed what God had for us that day. Hmm. And today I want to remind us before we go any other direction. Here's my aim. My aim needs to be so clear that not one person under the sound of my voice understands that there is another way, an alternative way to get to heaven. There's only one way. Aim is very clear. Do you know it? Do you know Him? That's where it is.